what is our impact? Locally, nationally, internationally, universally? Did you know that a botanic garden right here in Miami is having an impact beyond our planet? Well, Fairchild Tropical Botanic Garden is, and it all started with an ancient story of a group of people who felt the need to escape. Thousands of years ago, a group of explorers set out to colonize a new land. Leaving Asia in small seafaring canoes, these brave travelers were in search of a new home. No one knew why they left, whether it was war or famine or just curiosity. Taking with them only what they could carry, they had to make some difficult decisions. Without knowing where they were going and what they would find when they got there, they chose plants. Specifically, seeds and cuttings of plants that were important culturally, medicinally, for food and for building materials. You can actually follow their journey based on the plants found along the way. Today, we know these people as the ancient Polynesians. And those plants, well, those plants are some of Hawaii's most important crops, like bamboo or sugarcane or coconuts. That was the story that I told during my initial meeting with the scientists, engineers, and directors at NASA's Kennedy Space Center that made the director of human space exploration say, wow. That's like our mission to Mars. And it was then we knew that we had a new era of education and research at Fairchild Tropical Botanic Garden. What we proposed was to assist NASA scientists in testing crop options for growth on the International Space Station by engaging our huge network of thousands of middle and high school students that were already engaged in Fairchild's award-winning environmental science program the Fairchild Challenge, and this was something that had never been done before. And it all started with a simple garden crop, red romaine lettuce. Well, red romaine lettuce met all of the criteria set forth by NASA for growth on the, on the space station. It grows in small spaces, thrives under LED lights, produces large amounts of edible biomass, and provides vitamins not found in processed diets. Now, currently at NASA Kennedy Space Center, they've been testing a very small variety of plants over the years that they've been doing this. But with Fairchild's expertise, we were able to expand those options. To date, students, middle and high school students, have tested 91 varieties that meet these criteria. Some of those that we suggested were plants that were known for their use in long-distance travel. This, this is tetragonia. Tetragonia was used by Captain Cook on the endeavor to prevent scurvy amongst his crew. The smart scientist at Fairchild also knew that this plant was high in vitamin K. And vitamin K is very important in preventing bone mass loss something that astronauts face all the time. Now, our biggest challenge was to replicate the state-of-the-art and very expensive growth chamber found on the International Space Station with something that was more cost-effective for a nonprofit organization and could also withstand the wear and tear of a school classroom. Imagine that. Using only store-bought materials, Home Depot, Lowe's, Blick Art Supplies, we were actually able to replicate that growth chamber. The only thing that we couldn't replicate was zero gravity. But the scientist at NASA told us, don't worry about it. When we get to Mars, there'll be gravity. Who'd have thought? <laughs> now, to date, we have homemade growth chambers in 135 middle and high schools across South Florida, where they're testing research protocols that were designed in partnership with NASA scientist Dr. Joya Massa, where students are testing these different varieties in this homemade growth chamber. Something unique. 
all the while using that red romaine lettuce as their control. Now, since the Fairchild Challenge, the program that this was being implemented in, is a program that is facilitated by teachers, it was very important for us to make sure that the teachers were comfortable with the material that we were providing. It was a new level of rigor in research that they had never done before. NASA scientists agreed to come to Fairchild and train the teachers. Very helpful. And what happened was amazing. Students who had never grown anything were propagating plants in their classroom. And these same students were contributing, actively contributing, to real-world research. And that was powerful. And on top of all of that, the schools were contributing thousands of points of data to the scientists at NASA so that they could use that information to make determinations of what was going to be grown next in space with the help of middle and high school students. Now, at Fairchild, it is our philosophy that your science is only as good as you can communicate it. And it was very important for us to want to share this information, what we were doing, but how were we going to do that in a way that resonated with teenagers? Social media. Specifically, Twitter. We had asked all of our schools to regularly tweet scientifically relevant tweets so that we could share with the world what they were doing. But it was the unintended outcomes that were most surprising. We were able to have a snapshot into all 35 classrooms on a regular basis to ensure that they were following the research protocols, that they were they were having good success with their plans, and be able to have regular, regular communications with them. And in addition, those schools and those students were able to showcase to the entire world, to the research community, that middle and high school students using essentially homemade materials in their classrooms in South Florida were able to replicate and have results that were consistent with what was going on on the International Space Station. Now, for NASA, this was tremendous. They were able to test thousands of different, um, thou thousands of pieces of data. They were able to test 20 times as many varieties of plants than they ever had the option of testing. And with that, they recognized that this was very important to continuing their research. In August of 2016, they awarded Fairchild a grant for $1.25 million to continue our research. <laughs> An incredible labor of love to write a grant to NASA, for sure. Um, and what we're able to do now is what the Fairchild Challenge is truly all about. We want to be able to level the playing field and be able to offer all of the equipment and all of the resources that the schools will need to do this research free of charge, no matter what your school is, no matter where you're located. So now we're able to do that. But for Fairchild, the impacts are endless. By tapping into our history of exploration, the plant expertise that Fairchild is known for, and our huge network of environmentally-minded junior scientists, we're able to escape the notion that botany is a finished science to offer infinite possibilities of where we go next. Thank you.